Welcome to the video tutorial lessons on econometrics. In today's lesson, we are going to learn about the two variable regression analysis. In a typical econometric model, we are interested in using the known values of the independent variable in order to estimate or predict the mean of the dependent variable. So the expectation is to estimate y, which is the dependent variable, with the known values of x. We represent this expectation as shown on the screen, which is actually read as the expectation of y given the values of x. This expectation of y given the values of x is functionally related to x. The notation is given by the expectation of y given x is a function of x. This is known as the conditional expectation function or otherwise called the population regression function or population regression for short. If we assume that the population regression function is some linear function of x, then an econometric model to satisfy this assumption is shown on the screen, where beta 1 and beta 2 are known as regression coefficients, or otherwise known as the intercept and slope coefficients respectively. There are two concepts of linearity. The first is linearity in the variables. If we follow the previous assumption that the conditional expectation of y given x is a linear function of x, then this model doesn't satisfy linearity as the variable x is indexed at the power 2. Thus, it is non-linear in the variable. The second concept is linearity in the parameters. This states that the expectation of y given x is a linear function of the parameters. In this model, the parameter beta 2 is also indexed at the power 2, and so it becomes non-linear in the parameters. The linearity in parameters is satisfied in this model as the parameters beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3 are indexed at the power 1, and hence these parameters are linear. Linearity in the parameters is actually the relevant choice for developing regression models. And so the term linear regression really implies linearity in the parameters, although it may or may not be linear in the explanatory variables or xi's. But as long as it is linear in the parameters, our regression models can be developed and estimated. Now, for a given population y, we estimate the expected value of y given the values of x. This expectation can also be called the mean of y. So, deviation around the mean or expected value can be expressed as the difference between the population y and its estimated value. This difference is known as deviation or as econometrics calls it, the error term u. By making the population y a subject, this could be written alternatively as y equals expected value of y plus u, where u is known as the usual stochastic error or disturbance term. We again refer to u as a non-systematic component of the model. The expected value of y is also referred to as the systematic or deterministic component of the model, since it actually determines the behavior of the population y. It is almost practically impossible to obtain data on the overall population, so at best, we work with samples. Samples are actually best approximations to population regression estimations. So we develop the concept of sample regression function which is expressed in the form as shown on the screen, where the dependent variable is read as y hat or y cap, which is an estimator of the population y, or more specifically, the expected value of y given x values. Beta 1 cap is an estimator of the population parameter beta 1, and beta 2 cap is an estimator of the population parameter beta 2. The stochastic form of the sample regression function can be specified as y equals beta 1 cap plus beta 2 cap xi plus ui, where the parameter estimates actually represent the estimated y as shown previously. We adopt another term for the non-systematic component or error term, so we call it the residual term in this case. Generally, our primary objective is to estimate the population regression function based on the sample regression function because more often than not, our analysis is based on a sample from some given population. In the next lesson, we shall learn about the method of ordinary least squares. To this end, I hope you found this lesson useful. Thank you and have a nice day.